Broken. Lovely the band. Time now for the Fulton County Community Foundation report from Brian Johnson. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. How are you today? I think I'm okay. It's going to be a good day because yeah. no rain today. And so my question is, out. which seasons, plural, uh -huh. are we going to have today? Well, we're because starting out at 40, so okay. I, you know, it's... Because earlier this week, I'm pretty sure uh -huh. we had spring, summer, fall, and winter all within the period of about an hour and a half. Yes, yes. That had been Monday. That was. That was Monday, yeah. because I headed out uh, to do some running around errands, and yeah, I'm like, uh, it's snowflakes. <laughs> but then, it, yeah, it hits my windshield like rain, and it was cold, yeah. and... I, I was, read a note the other day that said the reason why they call it May is because it may be sunny, it may be <laughs> snowing, it may be... Exactly. So that's why it's called May. Perfect. Anyway, yes. So, hey, got a lot of things going on at the Community Foundation. Oh, uh, that's um, always a good thing. Of course, this is a, a time of year where um, we're thinking about graduation and scholarships, so we're looking forward to um, participating in some scholarship award programs later this um, month, so um, stay tuned for more details on that as we start presenting scholarships. And Is it too I, late to get in on those, or are most of those on closed? Those, yes. Okay. Um, for the graduating seniors, we've had that cycle. Um, those those selections are in process, um, and will be announced at the awards program. Okay. So, perfect. Um, looking forward to that. That being said, <laughs> some scholarships we don't currently have them available, but keep an eye on our website nicf.org. Um, starting the end of May or first part of June, we'll have what we deem as summer scholarships. So uh -huh. those are ones that are basically not for graduating seniors. Um, we have some that are available for individuals who are in our community, maybe looking for additional education, going back to school, non-traditional student, maybe have completed a GED program, or maybe just looking for some extra training for a current career they're in. Um, things like that. We also have some scholarships for students pursuing a law degree or graduate level degree um, and some of those for current college students who are in their undergraduate as well. So, um, so those will be available starting um, end of May, first part of June. Um, that application will be due right around the first of July. Um, so if you are a student that fits that, either a current college student um, looking to go back to school or pursuing a graduate level degree, check out those um, when they're available. So, um, thinking about some grant applications, we do have a couple of grant applications that have deadlines. Of course, we have our community support and impact grants mm -hmm. that don't have a deadline, but um, we have a couple of specific grants for Kiwana Union Township and Liberty Township. So organizations that are in those communities or serve folks in those communities for needs, projects, things going on in the community, check those out. Um, those deadlines are coming up May 8th, which is next Monday. Ooh. So um, it's not a huge application, um, but I always tell folks if you can tell me about your organization, tell me about your project, and give us an idea of what the budget for the project is going to be, you can do that grant application. And the bonus is that we now have that available for folks to complete entirely online. Awesome. So um, a new process, we've been in this about two or three months, and um, we found a couple of snags, but I think <laughs> we've worked those out, and so um, it's trying to make it as easy as possible. So again, if you're in Kiwana, the Union Township area, or Liberty Township, the Fulton area, and ha are part of an organization or have a, have a project that's going on, we'd look forward to be able to help support those um, through that. May 8th is the deadline. Just some examples of some previous projects would help with things like the uh, needs at the community center in Fulton, at the park in Fulton. Uh, Kiwana, you have places like the library, again the park, Little League, um, VFW, food pantry, um, things like that in the community. So um, May 8th is the deadline. Get those applications completed. If you have any issues, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, we can help you through the process or help with any questions that, that folks may have. So awesome. Um, talking about technology, <laughs> I sound like a broken record at the moment, but we have had our new software roll out and 
in addition to having scholarship applications online and grant applications online, part of our new software allows donors who have a donor advised fund to make grants, grant requests online. So um, if you haven't received information about how to log on, get your account information. Um, any donor that has a fund that um, that they are the fund founder for, they can actually get information online. Um, some of them, of course, like scholarships, would go through the process, <coughs> but donor advised funds are one where donors have some input on where those funds go. So um, they can make those requests online. Of course, you can always stop in and see us or give us a call. We, we still work that <laughs> way as well, because I know there's a lot of folks oh, that, yeah. that still prefer that. But if, if it's an interest to be able to complete a request online, um, let us know. And if you have any trouble getting connected with that, we're here to help. So, Perfect. Um, talking about some things going on, um, and this kind of relates to the focus of our program today, but um, it's exciting time looking at a housing study that a number of organizations are, are partnering on. I know Fedco has been the point organization on this, but um, had good participation from the community, so we're, we're excited to be able to help support that financially a little bit. Um, and so that'll be exciting. And I'll also put out a reminder that coming up this weekend and next weekend, and think about opening of Little League mm -hmm. and softball and all those fun it's things. that time so of year. I'm sure you're probably going to be out waiting for the parade on Friday. Well, yeah, that's the best part. Get yeah, candy, get kids candy. thrown. Yeah. yeah. Some there of those kids go. with those arms, though, if you stand back, yeah. don't get too close. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we're, we're excited about things like that, been able to support some, some grants um, in that area as well. Uh, so good luck to all the yeah. youth. It's kind of neat to see that because uh, some of those went to upgrades and different things yes, and ballparks yeah, well, and stuff. We think so. about some things like over in Akron, they have they did um, a couple years worth of renovations. Um, recently, I know one thing that they were able to do just this spring was install, install these things called jock boxes. Okay. It's a batter's box, kind of goes underneath the dirt and oh. makes it so that it's a nice flat surface oh, wow. for okay. the kids. In the batter's box, kind of jealous because yeah. when I played, you always had to fix the hole yeah, before you could get yeah, in the right spot. Ankle but, deep in the hole, and yeah. <laughs> but um, so that's that's something that they were able to install awesome. and have have done some new things over there. Um, if you've been past the Rochester Diamonds, you'll see some new fencing and some new dugouts that we we're able to help um, participate with. So um, we appreciate all the volunteers that make these youth sports activities available for families in our community. So looking forward to a good season. And it looks like it's supposed to be good yeah, weather. Yeah, finally. I, I mean, didn't just jinx us. We, we should have started uh, the season a long time ago if that's all it took. Yes, <laughs> there you go. So so looking forward to that. So, Well, today what I wanted to do is continue our conversation. Um, last month we had... Hector and Debbie Fernandez representing Celebrate Recovery talking about substance abuse and some mm -hmm. of the things that are going on. Of course, we have that program. We have Recovery Cafe. Um, we have a number of organizations working to provide some some substance, up, I guess, support for folks right. dealing with substance abuse. Um, and, and really this ties back to the themes that we heard from a needs assessment that the community did through some community conversations. Um, at the end of 2019 and 2020. Um, and it's kind of interesting when we look back at that report, some of the things that came to the top were substance abuse, housing was another one. So we're talking about the housing study. Um, it's interesting, I was just involved in a conversation last night trying to find a suitable home for a family moving to the community. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, you know what? Argus is the closest place we can find so far. Mm. Even to the point where they're saying, hey, we, we're probably going to be looking for a lot to build. Yeah. So um, we know that housing is, is a significant need. It's kind of interesting when we, when we saw that, we thought, how is the Community Foundation able to be involved in this? But I'm so excited that we're working on this housing study to yeah. kind of look at the needs that we all know are here. Right. And then 
not only look at the needs and identify them, but develop a plan about how to address those. So um, that'll be exciting. And then um, in the near future, we'll also be hearing about services for youth. Mm. That was another significant <clears throat> thing. And, and you think about 2019, 2022, that was before the Outlet Youth Center was up right. and going. They were working on the plans for that and very close to opening, but um, that was another significant need. So it's kind of neat when we look back and see some of the things that came up in these conversations and how we've already been able to start addressing some of these things. So um, today what I wanted to talk about a little bit was kind of that community collaboration and shared vision. Um, those were two things that themes that also came out of these conversations just the whole concept of we as a community if we can work together we can get more done the housing study is an example of this I mean the last conversation I sat on that there were public officials there are private companies there were service organizations there were local schools involved in that conversation um, that collaboration and shared vision so um, some of the things that we wanted to try and do as a community foundation was to help strengthen our local nonprofits. Um, if we have strong nonprofits that don't necessarily have to worry about the day-to-day -day operations, but can focus on collaboration and how they can um, how they can work in our community and also work with other organizations. So um, we've developed some some programs to be able to help provide some education to the community and, and specifically nonprofits. Awesome. Um, so last year we did the first um, of the Bridges Out of Poverty and Poverty Simulations. Um, we'll talk about that here in a minute, some details, but the first thing that we actually have coming up is a local grant workshop. Um, we have the opportunity to see a lot of nonprofits in our community and support those nonprofits and in, in the amazing things they do. If we stood back and just looked at all the support that nonprofit organizations provide in our community and the services that we have because of those organizations, I think most people's minds would be blown just at that level of you think about things like Compassionate Health Center, nonprofit organization that is literally saving lives. You look around, we have some great food banks. Um, we're able to participate in a, in a grant program through the state a couple of years ago and the folks from the state actually asked, they said, we want to know more about these because we're amazed at the number of folks that these organizations are able to serve. Um, so something to be proud of in our community. Um, you think about organizations like Habitat for Humanity have almost 20 families in homes yeah. because they <clears throat> exist and we're sitting here talking about we need more houses. So um, that's a nonprofit that's able to provide those needs. So we've got some really amazing organizations. But um, this grant workshop that we're going to be hosting is going to be on May 23rd at noon and it'll be at our office, 227 East 9th Street. Um, there's no cost. Um, if you plan to come, give me a heads up just so that we can make sure we have space because we do have limited seating. <laughs> um, I didn't initially ask for an RSVP because I think we can fit everybody in, but um, part of our goal is to provide some opportunities for organizations to hear about from local organizations that they may be receiving grants from. So the Community Foundation will be there represented. Um, we'll also have a representative from Fulton County REMC talking about their Operation Roundup program, a grant program that they provide um, grants on a quarterly basis. Um, the Fulton County Tourism Commission, um, think about things coming up like the Nickel Plate Festival mm -hmm. and um, some of those things that bring in tourists. And then um, we're also excited, we'll have a representative from Indiana Humanities an organization that provides some art and culture oh. uh, programs awesome. that not a lot of folks in our community are familiar with. Oh. So um, it is actually an Indiana, Indianapolis-based organization, but grants throughout the community. I know we we have some organizations, libraries, and organizations such as that that 
have participated in these programs, but some cultural enrichment and uh, history and things like that are, are available. So um, again, that'll be May 23rd. We'll try and keep it to an hour. Um, the workshop will start at noon at our conference room. Um, and if folks have questions of any of those organizations, we'll have, have a brief program, but time to interact with those organizations. And um, if you have specific questions for them, please come prepared to ask those because we want to connect folks with the funds, with those doing the project. So a neat opportunity there. Circling back around to our conversation about a poverty simulation, Bridges Out of Poverty, um, we'll be offering both of those programs again. Um, both of those will be in June. So the poverty simulation will be held on June 6th from 2 to 5 p.m. and that'll be out at the Historical Society. And this is really designed for organizations or individuals that work with folks in poverty. Um, developing better ways to help serve or um, more effective ways to communicate mm -hmm. with individuals. So um, the poverty simulation is kind of an interesting process. As a participate, participant, you go and basically live the month in the life of somebody dealing with poverty. And you think about how do we balance all of these things mm -hmm. in our life. You think about some folks may not have the resources if their car breaks down, how do I get to work? If I'm late to work, how does that, what happens with my job? If I lose my job, how do I fix my car? So those, those types of things, how to, how to help folks that are in those situations um, work out of those situations is really the goal. So the poverty simulation is kind of interesting. Um, I've been through it and I will say it's an eye-opening experience, can be a little bit stressful through that mm -hmm. process, but um, really a great opportunity to, to learn what um, some of the folks we serve are dealing with and why they make some decisions because some of those don't always make sense to me, but when I'm put in that situation, right. all of a sudden it does make sense. So um, there is no cost for the poverty simulation. Um, but we do ask that folks register ahead of time. Um, we do have a link on the Fulton County page. Um, again, NICF.org, and if you click on the Fulton County link, um, there will be a place to register for that program and also Bridges Out of Poverty. That will be the following week, June 13th. Um, that will be an all-day program, um, 8.30 in the morning till 3.30 that afternoon. Um, there is a $20 registration fee for that. I'm telling folks, if you're part of an organization and can't afford that $20 registration fee, let me know because we do have some, some funding available to help organizations out as well on that. Um, part of what you'll receive is the Bridges Out of Poverty book and lunch will be provided okay. that day. So that um, registration fee doesn't quite cover all those things, but helps a little bit. So. Um, and, and we want organizations to be able to attend this. Um, it's a really neat program. Um, it deals again with generational poverty and that attitude and communication and all those things. If I can't communicate with someone on the level that they understand, it does no good right. for either of us. So, um, so that's, that's a really neat thing. This is a, a great program for folks that Again, for some of the nonprofits that we work with, um, schools, hospitals, folks that are that are dealing um, with individuals that may be from a generational poverty, not necessarily a situational poverty, but a generational poverty background. Um, so, I'd encourage organizations if you are working with with folks, um, attend one or both. Neither of these are required to attend the other, but they both build on each other. So this poverty simulation is a great way to kind of experience that. And then the bridges starts talking about some of the concepts about how we're effective or more effective in serving folks. So um, something that's really exciting, again, the registration is available at NICF.org. Click on the Fulton County link and um, get signed up for that. Um, something else that we're working on is um, we've partnered with the Chamber of Commerce and we'll be offering some board training um, in August and September. We'll have 
have some specific organizations that are invited to that. But again, the, the concept of strengthening our local nonprofits, um, because they really do provide so many services in our community that wouldn't be available without nonprofits as a whole. So um, we really want to help organizations as they develop boards. One thing that's interesting with a nonprofit is you, you talk about how do we measure our impact. A retail business may say, hey, we made this many sales and we made this much profit. But with a nonprofit, you say, well, we put on this festival. <laughs> how do we measure the impact of this? Right. Or we help folks with food. How do we measure the impact of that? So it's it's really neat to see that because it's, it's a lot of times a difficult thing to say, well, we know we're doing good, but how do we measure that? Or how do we figure out if we're doing the most good that we can or in the best way? So um, so that'll be something that'll be coming up in August and se September, and we'll be inviting some organizations to participate in that. So with just a reminder about some of the things that we talked about, um, keep an eye out for summer scholarships. Mm -hmm. Those will be available starting in June. Um, the Kiwana Union Township and Liberty Township grant applications, those are currently available. The deadline is May 8th on those projects. If you have a project that impacts one of those communities, check that application out. You can do that online, nicf.org. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. Of course, Fulton County is part of the Northern Indiana Community <laughs> Foundation, so if you see Northern Indiana Community Foundation on Facebook, like us. We try and keep information updated there as well um, about anything that we've got going on. Um, you can give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas or plans or questions you may have about the foundation and how we can, we can all help make Fulton County a great place. Ryan, we appreciate you stopping in, and uh, always great talking to you, and have a great month. Thanks for having me. No problem. Brian Johnson of the Community Foundation here on the Giant FM Morning Show. That's going to do it for the Giant FM Morning Show. Back with you tomorrow morning, starting at 6 a.m. Right now, it's the fray.